So from my perspective, running an organization called Innosight that advises leaders in large organizations in how to confront the challenges of disruptive change, we're now in a race that never ends, where we have new competitors and new runners that are getting into it all the time. We've got new rules that change the game as we're midstream. It is something that every organization is now struggling with. They know that they have to do things different and do things differently in order to win. But as you've got new competitors with new tactics and new rules, it's really challenging for a leader to figure out what to do. So this, in our eyes, is the challenge facing leaders today. What do we do to create the next version of ourselves? And that can only come from innovation. I think you can choose to not participate and you have ridden your own death, Warren. So that, that's a choice that you can make. And you are then sowing the seeds of your own destruction as an organization because adapt or die. Those words from Andy Grove have never been more true. I think you just have to deal with the reality that the world is a competitive world, that there are people that you are fighting against. I think it is fair to realize that this is not a zero-sum game. You know, we were founded by Clayton Christensen from the Harvard Business School, who introduced the term disruption into the business lexicon. One of the biggest mistakes that people make is they think disruption is a bad word. It sounds bad, your mouth contorts when you say it, but the truth is disruption, when used properly, is a tremendous force for good. It democratizes markets, it creates huge amount of growth, it can be a very powerful force to your advantage. So you do have to recognize the reality that there are competitors, there are threats, but also recognize that you can all win the race together. It doesn't have to be one person defeats the other. So I would say two things. I think number one, absolutely, there is some really healthy things that come from competition. It pushes you, it lets you to get to levels that you didn't realize were possible, absolutely. The other thing that I think is important is not everything has to be a she wins, he loses sort of competition. It can be one where as you compete, you also collaborate and you find ways to push each other further together. One of the big things that drives me crazy is when a startup company says, the only way I succeed is by taking down the incumbent. I've got to disrupt, disembowel, whatever. And that's not right. In many cases, the way that a startup can fulfill its mission of having as much impact as possible is working with and through established companies, not trying to take them down. So that's not to say that having foosball tables and nice cafeterias and all that is bad and you shouldn't do it. But if that's all you do, because that's what you see at innovative companies, and you think that's the hallmark of a culture of innovation, the results, I guarantee, will disappoint. So what's it, behind it then? So the, the most important thing is to recognize that a culture of innovation is one in which the habits of innovation, the behaviors that drive innovation success, which I think you can simplify down to one word, curiosity, is something that comes naturally. You don't have to force it, you don't have to tell people to do it, you don't even have to pay them to do it. They just do it because it's who they are and what they want to do. That's not an easy thing to do. You might instantiate it by going to a central location and meeting a person you never met before and playing foosball with them, but it's because you've got a desire to want to meet new people, you've got a desire to want to try new things, you've got a desire to go and experiment a little bit. And if you don't have any of those desires, no hope. So there's nobody that I've seen globally where you say they've got, they're firing on all cylinders, they've got every piece of the equation right. I think you've got different people who are doing different things correctly. And the thing that I always, on the company side, the thing I'm always attracted to is not the Google slash Alphabet slash Amazon slash Netflix slash whatever of the world. Those are interesting but those are founder-led companies that can do things that other companies can't. What I'm more interested in are people like General Electric that has embraced the idea of disciplined experimentation. People like DBS in Singapore, a very staid conservative company that has made experimentation core to what it does. Countries like Singapore that are based on disciplined execution that are also pushing the creativity frontier, at least in some places. So it's the unexpected things that I think are more interesting than the usual stuff. Everybody has slightly different words to describe those two things that a company needs to do, but those are the two things a company needs to do. They need to continuously make today better, and they have to invent and create tomorrow. If you get that out of balance, do too much of one versus the other, you get in trouble. And those that can manage the creative tensions or paradoxes in it are the ones that are worth studying. 
it's easy to say that the problem comes down to leadership. But I don't think that's totally fair. But I think if you are to say what is the biggest malaise that exists inside large organizations, it is the addiction that exists in many companies to business as usual, where they do things that are self-destructive, not investing in the long term, not taking well thought out risks, etc., because they want to keep focusing on making tomorrow a tiny bit better than today. And if you don't break the addiction to business as usual, you can't do any of this stuff. So the companies that fall behind in the pack, the addiction is taking root and it gets worse and it's very corrosive, like any addiction.